You know, ladies and gentlemen, New Brunswick is no virgin when it comes to anti-French or anti-bilingualism sentiment. Now, uh, we've talked about the core party before, the English-speaking Canadians of New Brunswick, the Anglo Society of New Brunswick, but it was, like I said, the anti-French rhetoric had been around for a number of years, but in all places where I think it, it caused a lot, of, a lot of damage, but not to the English side of New Brunswick, actually it helped the Acadian cause, was uh, something done by uh, Mr. Leonard Jones. Now, if you never heard of this name before, you're saying, uh, is that a real name? Like, it sounds like a, a musician or an actor. No, 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 no. He was a Canadian lawyer and politician who served as a mayor of Moncton between 63 and 74, and he was an independent MP for the constituency of Moncton between 74 and 79. Now, you're, you're saying to yourself, what... Does this person have to do with anti-French sentiment in New Brunswick? Now, he was elected to Moncton City Council in 57 and was voted as mayor in 63. He is best remembered for his opposition to the use of the French language in city business, requiring all council meetings to be conducted exclusively in English, although the city is one-third francophone. In 72, Jones rejected the use of bilingual municipal street signs. This frequently put him at odds with the Brunswick's Liberal Premier Louis Robichaud, who was, who was concurrently adopting legislation recognizing the equality of French language within the province. Now, Conservative Premier Richard Hatfield, who won uh, as Premier between 1970 all the way to 87, who succeeded Robichaud in that 1970 year, regarded Jones as a bigot and said so publicly. Now, this hurt his uh, vote totals in some of the Anglophone uh, communities in Moncton and surrounding areas, Mayor she and uh, almost cost him the 1978 election. He only won by two seats. Now, after Robichaud opened the University of de Moncton, a French language university in the city in 64, he quickly became the tar target for frequent protests by students at the new school. Jones frequently decried the tactics of some Acadian protesters. The most publicized incident was in 68, when two students delivered a severed pig head to Jones's house. The events of this period were chronicled in the documentary film L'Acadie, L'Acadie, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, published, no, not published, but uh, premiered by the National Film Board in 1971. Jones didn't like the texture of the documentary and sued the CBC and the NFP for defamation. Now, with the linguistic tensions high on both sides during the late 60s and early 70s, Jones remained popular with the Anglophone majority in Moncton. As it stands right now, the, uh, the what do you call, the dual Acadians, the English Acadians and the French Acadians dominated Moncton, but at the time, Moncton was a, was a heavily Anglophone area. Now, he eventually left the mayor's chair to run as a PC candidate in the 74 federal election. However... After Jones won the nomination, party leader Robert Stanfield refused to sign Jones' nomination papers, which drew a lot of controversy across Canada, citing his opposition to the party's policy on bilingualism. Now, the Socreds uh, uh, tried to get him into the party when he won, uh, ran and won as an independent candidate that year, when he won, get this, 46% of the vote. Again, he did not, uh, this, uh, he did not run for a second term. Now, he won 20,671% votes, 46%. Uh, Leonard Sear for the Liberals, 16,199. Charlie Thomas of the PCs. So you look at the uh, what it impacted there. Lost a lot of votes, 6,456. David Britton had 1,501 for the NDP. And Bobby uh, Bobby Taylor for the Soul Creds had uh, 34, uh, 343 votes. 45,000 votes in the riding, ladies and gentlemen. A very good uh, turnout, as we say. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, the idea is um, it was a predominantly conservative riding, and when it was rejected, the conservatives went down in vote by 38% prior to the last election. Now, it's kind of ironic. You got uh, People's Alliance in New Brunswick, the People's Party of Canada. You have the former core party. You have Blaine Higgs, the uh, the failed uh, core leader. He ran for leadership and lost. Failed Liberal, uh, basically, just won by a squeaker to PC leadership, which led him to being premier. Uh, there's no virgins in New Brunswick. There's been uh, what he called bigoted. Dad, don't, don't use that word anymore. Bigot. Uh, it used to be, you know, uh, all my all the family term. 
Now, from what I've been told about this gentleman, I never had the opportunity to cover him as a journalist. He was steadfast in his ways like an old school, just like some Francophone leaders in Quebec were anti-English. Like I said, you have to respect somebody that stands up for what he believes is right, but he only saw one side of the issues. And one-third of the population at the time had no power in Moncton because he didn't want to give him any power. And uh, future uh, mayors and councillors have learned from the Jones aspect. You have to respect the English Acadian, the French Acadian, and the Anglophone or Allophone uh, population of Moncton or Riverview or Dieppe, the whole thing. And uh, Moncton has been a bellwether for any election where basically if you win, support in Moncton. But uh, Blaine Higgs uh, and the, the other, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, English parties have got great support among them through the years, especially for, for Brian Mulroney, for obvious reasons. So, uh, but uh, Mr. Jones, like I said, it's a, it's a time well passed. There was a time, ladies and gentlemen, that the Acadian uh, student population was very radical, just like the Quebecois student population was very radical in the 1960s, which led, of course, to the Parti Acadien and some pushback from uh, English-speaking Canadians in New Brunswick, the Anglo Society in New Brunswick, the core party and all that. See, the political landscape in Canada has been strange. Uh, the Quiet Revolution, the rise of separatism, uh, you know, KKK and Saskatchewan, there's always been a bastion of white power or Anglophone power that rises up every once in a while. But <coughs> until Blaine Hayes got in New Brunswick, it never really fermented itself because if anything, Hatfield was a dual uh, prime minister. He, he reached out to the Acadian communities, did a lot of infrastructure in uh, the English and French Acadian communities in the province. But I said, I have no respect for Blaine Higgs because he's basically staying in power by uh, pretending he's not an Anglophone leader, which what he is. And until he gets somebody to kick him out, a dual leader, like Frank McKenna was Anglophone, but he wasn't an Anglophone leader. So, I mean, anyway, it is what it is. So that's a little bit of history of uh, one of the most interesting MPs in New Brunswick history. If you like what you're doing here with our political podcast, let us know what a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Bye.